Well, tonight uh, is actually the celebration of the 180th anniversary of Mark Twain's birth. Mr. Welsh is the one who noted it was the 180th birthday, and he said, I'd like to do a benefit show, and the proceeds would go to University Theater and to Playhouse in the Park, which is sort of the essence of the spirit of the Town and Gown program. And he said, would you be interested in participating? And I said, you bet. I can't think of anything neater than that. And coincidentally, I had been working on a new version of the Mark Twain show, which is a little different from anything I've been doing. I've been doing it since, uh, I guess, 73. Uh, but this version is less educational, biographical, and more theatrical. So its interest is in things that would be pleasing to the audience, that have dramatic impact or instructional impact. And it's not so much a linear description of where he lived and what he did, which my previous script was. For decades and to this day, Professor Valentine dives into character. This time, not just for a good cause, but for his and our indulgence. And as with most things, this too came from small beginnings. December of 73 is the first time I ever portrayed Mark Twain as a character on stage. Uh, actually, <laughs> you won't believe this, but I'll tell you. I ran across a short story by Mark Twain, and I just thought it was the funniest thing I ever read. So I took it to my brother, who is a theater major at University of Kentucky, and I said, read this. And I came back a couple days later and said, the book is overdue at the library. I need the book. He said, I haven't had a chance to read it. And I got upset with him. He said, look, if you really want people to know this story, script it for the stage. We'll do it on stage. And then everybody will see it at once. And you won't have to carry the book around to everybody you know, which makes remarkably good sense. So that's what we did. We scripted it for a stage. It's the first time we noticed that if you're going to do Mark Twain, the essence of Mark Twain's literature is that he's not necessarily telling a funny story, he's telling a story funny, and that means that the way he describes things and explains things and illuminates things is pretty important. And we didn't have a Mark Twain character in this, it was just dialogue between other characters. So we invented a Mark Twain character. Well, naturally, he had to have a white suit and long white hair, mustache. Fortunately, at the time, I had everything except white hair. It took four hours to make me look like I was 70 years old. It doesn't take that much time anymore. Professor Valentine hopes with this performance that you can learn a bit and be entertained at the same time. Ironically enough, that's exactly how he teaches his classes. I hope they'll get engaged with Mark Twain as a writer and also a thinker. If they'll get engaged with Twain, I don't think they'll be disappointed. I think they'll have a great time. If they'll go read some of his works, they will not be sorry, and they'll understand a lot more about America. We hear a lot of talk about America now, mostly by people who really don't understand much about it. If you want to understand America, you have got to read Mark Twain. Hemingway called, said Mark Twain, he said, all American literature begins with one book titled The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. And up until then, most American writers had been imitating the Europeans and uh, thinking that anything American couldn't really be very good, so they would avoid it as a topic. But uh, Twain, Samuel Clemens, thought there was a lot to tell about America, and uh, it should be told, and told frequently, and told in an American voice, not like a European trying to figure out what these weird people are doing. And so he did it. He did it very well. I think uh, Hemingway is probably very, very right. That's the reason Twain is still read, even though he upsets a lot of people. He could not possibly be happier if you told him, you know, Mr. Twain, 100 year, 180 years after your birth, your literature still makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Why, well, he would consider that to be the best birthday present you could possibly give him.